Municipalities prepare for possible Canada Post strike. Dan Kearns, The Standard, North Durham, Kawartha. The townships of Scugog and Uxbridge, as well as the city of Kawartha Lakes, are preparing for the possible impacts of a Canada Post strike. The earliest Canada Post workers could strike is September 26th, after union workers vote to take strike action if a deal isn't reached before then. Scugog clerk J.P. Newman told The Standard, They are sending out ballots sooner since the township of Scugog chose to vote by mail for the 2018 municipal election. We're mailing ballots earlier than we had originally planned. We were originally going to mail ballots to voters on September 28th. We are now mailing them September 18th and 19th, he said. The 18th and 19th should get them out to houses prior to any possible strike on September 26th. He also encouraged voters to drop off their ballot kit to the Scugog Municipal Office. We encourage people to submit their voter kits as soon as they get them or soon thereafter because it helps us with the processing of them. People can submit them to us any time prior to the 8 p.m. October 22nd deadline. He also noted the township has an after-hours mail slot the ballots can be dropped off to. To check what ward you are in and to make sure you are on the voter list, go to www.scugog.ca forward slash election. In Uxbridge, it's a similar situation. It's a shell game, Director of Legislative Services Clerk Debbie LaRoe said. We can only go with the information we have. Voter kits in Uxbridge will also be sent out September 17th and 18th instead of the following week in an attempt to avoid the possible strike interfering with voters receiving them. The township has already made plans in the event there is a postal strike, cautioning voters to keep an eye on the news. If they hear there is going to be a strike, Ms. LaRoe emphasized, do not drop ballots in the mail. The plan for if a strike does take place is to open up extra ballot drop-off locations. If you're nervous about getting your vote stuck in the mail, Deputy Clerk Catalina Blumenberg suggests dropping it off at Town Hall. The best case is to drop it off to guarantee your vote gets counted, Ms. Blumenberg said. Despite the possible postal strike complication, Ms. Blumenberg said the township still expects high voter turnout. This election has the ingredients for a high voter turnout, she said. A lot of people have been engaged. The last day to mail in ballots for the election will be October 11th, but you can drop off your ballot up until October 22nd at 8 p.m. For more information, you can contact the Uxbridge Election Office at 905-852-9181 or go to election at town.uxbridge.on.ca. Meanwhile, in the Kawartha Lakes, they will also be mailing out the voter kits early, starting Wednesday, September 19th. If you do not receive your voting kit in the mail by the time the voting period opens, you will be able to obtain your voting kit from the election office at City Hall, located at 26 Francis Street in Lindsay. For those living outside of Lindsay, there will be various service centres throughout Kawartha Lakes where residents can pick up their kit. Kawartha Lakes, like many other municipalities in Ontario, have adopted a new alternative voting system, internet telephone voting, for the 2018 municipal elections. This alternative voting method has been successfully used in the previous municipal elections in other municipalities, Kavanaugh, Monaghan, Markham, Wasega Beach, etc., for both efficiency and voter turnout. Internet telephone voting offers convenience for all voters, whether they live in Seabright, Seagrave, Scarborough, or South Carolina, as all eligible voters will receive their voting kits in the mail and will be able to vote from the convenience of their own home. It eliminates polling stations, advanced polls, and proxy voting. It provides accessibility and has been fully endorsed by our Accessibility Advisory Committee. It transforms every telephone, smartphone, or desktop computer into a ballot box. If you need more information or have any questions or concerns, contact the Kawartha Lakes City Clerk or the Elections Office at City Hall by calling 705-324-9411, extension 1888. MP Jennifer O'Connell named Parliamentary Secretary to Minister of Finance. Cassidy McMullen, Uxbridge. MP Jennifer O'Connell was named Parliamentary Secretary of Finance on August 31st after Prime Minister Trudeau added nine new MPs to the position while also removing four. MP O'Connell is joining current Parliamentary Secretary to Minister of Finance MP Joel Lightbound as she will have a focus in youth economic opportunity. The added focus of youth opportunity is an exciting opportunity, MP O'Connell said. Economic opportunity for young people is going to be critical. 
MP O'Connell has been on the Finance Committee for three years now, so she is very familiar with the work she'll be doing. A big part of our government is making sure no one is left behind, Ms. O'Connell explained. Making sure this generation feels a part of the economy is important. One of the focuses of her new position as Parliamentary Secretary to Minister of Finance, Youth Economic Opportunity, will be affordable housing. Access to affordable housing determines where people settle down and what jobs they can access. Housing can also determine financial security, especially for youth. The rule of thumb for determining if housing is affordable, according to the Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corporation, is if it costs less than 30% of the gross household income. When housing becomes more than that, it can lead residents to poverty and or homelessness. Another focus of MP O'Connell's will be skills and training along with global competitiveness. She wants to make sure youth are armed with the relevant skills to make them competitive in the workforce, especially on the global stage. Young people entering kindergarten, their jobs haven't been invented yet, MP O'Connell said about the involving job field. Every business is thinking about competitiveness. I think Canada is prime for that. Though she has a new position, MP O'Connell wanted to highlight their Though she has a new position, MP O'Connell wanted to highlight her first priority. At the end of the day, my job is to serve Pickering and Uxbridge. While it'll be a new balance, MP O'Connell said she's excited and ready for the challenge. Upgrades to the Lindsay Little Theater thanks to a grant, Kawartha Lakes. The board of directors for Lindsay Little Theater are pleased to recently learn they have been awarded a $25,500 capital grant by the Ontario Trillium Foundation. Funds from the grant were used for improvements to the theater's 55 George Street West studio. The grant was used to upgrade the electrical system, replace the furnace, and install air conditioning. The project was completed in July 2018. The Lindsay Little Theater has contributed to the culture and heritage of our community and supported a number of local charities for more than five decades, said Lori Scott, MPP for Halliburton Kawartha Lakes Brock. This Ontario Trillium Foundation grant will be used to upgrade the facility, ensuring this community treasure can continue to thrive and help those in need for years to come. The board is especially thrilled about the air conditioning component of the grant. In the past, show schedules were adjusted because of the heat in the building. With the planned improvements, programming and scheduling of the spring, summer and fall shows can be more flexible. Patrons and participants will be able to enjoy the theatre year-round in comfort. Lindsay Little Theatre is a community theatre group operated solely by volunteers. It has a proud history spanning more than 50 years of high-quality theatrical and musical productions. The theatre provides opportunities for the community to experience and learn about live theatre in an intimate, accessible setting. The Ontario Trillium Foundation, OTF, is an agency of the Government of Ontario and is one of Canada's leading granting foundations. OTF awarded more than $120 million to some 700 projects this year to build healthy and vibrant Ontario communities. Scugog moving to regulate cannabis facility placement. Dan Kearns, The Standard. Scugog. Scugog Council took the first step toward regulating where cannabis production facilities can be placed in the township at a meeting on Monday, September 17th. At the meeting, Council passed recommendations to authorize township staff to come up with draft amendments to the Scugog official plan as well as the zoning bylaw and site plan control bylaw to regulate the siting and design of cannabis production facilities and one for the development charges bylaw regarding a charge for these type of facilities. Those draft amendments are then to be forwarded to Council in early 2019 before a public open house is held. Planning technician Rob Vertoli and planning consultant Jamie Robinson presented a report to Council at the meeting regarding the regulation of these facilities. Currently, policies found within the Scugog Official Plan and Zoning Bylaw 14-14 offered no direct or specific regulations pertaining to cannabis civil offer no direct or specific regulations pertaining to cannabis cultivation. At the present time, staff consider cannabis production as an agricultural use and is therefore allowed to be cultivated in all zones where such a use is currently permitted, read a staff report from Mr. Vertoli. The report went on to state, with the forthcoming legislation of cannabis, coupled with the township's inherent agricultural nature, the future proliferation of this use is to be expected requiring changes to the township's current land use policies and procedures to ensure that the appropriate regulatory review standards are in place moving forward. 
Mr. Robinson told Council some of the planning considerations around these types of facilities are the odor of it, traffic to these types of facilities, as well as wastewater concerns. We think it's appropriate the planning documents be updated to reflect this new use, Mr. Robinson said. CAO Paul Allor said making these changes is a proactive approach to take advantage of the economic benefits of this emerging industry and protection to the residents of the township at the same time. However, Ward 4 Councillor Wilma Watton questioned what controls the township has when it comes to regulating this industry. Are we really able to put these rules in place, Councillor Watton asked. Mr. Robinson responded, stating the township has the right to regulate the use of land. Ward 5 Councillor Jennifer Back recommended the township create a new zoning category specifically for cannabis facilities. Technical foul. North Durham Sports. Victoria McDonald, recognition of five gold medals. Cassidy McMullen, the standard. Oxbridge. You could hear the gold medals clinking against each other as Victoria McDonald went up to receive her certificate from Mayor Pat Malloy when she was recognized at the September 10th City Council meeting. Ms. McDonald had swept up at the National Summer Games in the swimming category with two medals for individual and three for team swims. It was crazy beating those other girls, Ms. McDonald said. We're from a small town. Small town or not, Ms. McDonald had been swimming since she was little and has wrapped up what Mayor Malloy described as an amazing swimming year. The National Summer Games celebrated their 50th anniversary, which only added to the honor of winning the medals for Ms. McDonald. The Games took place in Antigonish, Nova Scotia. Overall, there are nine sports in the Games, including basketball, golf, softball, and swimming. I think it's just amazing, regional chair and former mayor Jerry Lynn O'Connor said, because I could drown in a bathtub. Leading up to the Games, Ms. McDonald was doing four days a week of training. Leading up to the Games, Ms. McDonald was doing four days a week of training in the pool, with one day on land doing track training. Anyone who could achieve what you've done deserves to be congratulated, Regional Chair O'Connor said. High representation for Ontario. Victoria, you're a rock star, Mayor Malloy said. Now with five gold medals under her belt, in only three years of competing in swimming, Ms. McDonald has her eyes on World's Games. The Standard Podcast was produced by Greenstream Studio for The Standard Newspaper. 